Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. This week we're gonna be looking at the most effective variations to isolate the chest. Now before we get into that, I think I should say that I think the best way to build a big strong chest is to build up a big bench press. And if I had to include just one accessory movement, it'd probably be a weighted dip. Uh, but with that said, if you have a lagging chest or if you have disproportionately developed pecs, say for example, your upper chest is lagging, then you can use an isolation movement like a fly to squeeze in some extra chest volume without creating too much fatigue overall. So with really any fly, we're gonna be performing primarily horizontal shoulder adduction. So basically bringing your arm across your body. And this is the same basic biomechanical movement pattern you're performing with a bench press or a dumbbell press, except with the fly, the elbow angle is gonna be kept pretty much constant, which is gonna take the triceps out of the movement and isolate the chest. Whereas in a press, your elbow is gonna flex and extend under load, which has the advantage of targeting more overall muscle mass but also makes the lift harder to recover from. Now we can target the upper chest more by adding in a shoulder flexion component, since the clavicular head of the pecs is able to assist with shoulder flexion, or basically raising your arm up like in a front raise. And this is the same reason why an incline bench angle tends to hit the upper pec fibers a bit better. It forces you to perform more shoulder flexion, targeting that clavicular head. Now, one of the lesser known functions of the pec is shoulder internal rotation. So basically when you rotate your arms inward, and you can Try this for yourself. If you put your hand on your chest and then rotate your arm inward, you should feel your pec contract a bit. So in order to make this feasible, we're gonna wanna set up our flies on cables rather than using dumbbells or the pec deck. Now that isn't to say those options are no good, uh, but if I had to pick just one fly to use, I think it would be a cable fly. And the problem with using dumbbells is that you reach peak tension at the bottom where you have maximum stretch on the pecs, since torque is gonna to be greatest at that point. But then throughout the concentric range of motion, tension progressively decreases until it reaches a minimum at the top where there's basically zero tension on the pecs. Now one potential fix here is to stop a bit shy of full adduction and just sort of keep a constant tension groove going in the mid range. And that can work, but then you're still gonna be missing out on that peak contraction at the top. And while the pec deck is better in the sense that it has a more consistent resistance curve, it's still limited in the fact that your shoulder is gonna be more locked into position. So you're pretty much forced into performing pure adduction, meaning you can't get that shoulder flexion involved to hit the upper pecs more or internally and externally rotate freely. So assuming the goal is to target the upper pecs, I think you should set up the cables low so that when you grab the handles, your arms are out at about 15 to 30 degree angle. Take one or two steps forward until you feel a slight stretch in your pecs and plant your feet with a stable stance so you don't lose your balance. For me, a staggered stance works best. And before initiating the positive, you wanna make sure that your shoulder blades are retracted and depressed exactly as they would be in a bench press. And you should find that if you really keep your scapulae retracted, you'll feel a much, much stronger pec contraction at the top than if you allowed your back to round forward, which is sort of gonna ease the slack off the pecs. You also wanna externally rotate your shoulders you're just gonna put the pec in its most lengthened position before you initiate the fly. And then from there, you can draw the cables up and across your body simultaneously while thinking about pulling the insides of your elbows in toward one another. So as you perform the positive, you're gonna be internally rotating until you reach a hand position at the top where your thumbs are facing one another. And then on the negative, you wanna reverse the motion under control, allowing the pecs to stretch as you bring your arms back down while externally rotating at the same time. Now, because the fly is a single single joint isolation movement. We're gonna be using lighter weights here with higher reps, usually something in the 15 to 20 rep range. And because it's more of a pump focused mind muscle connection style movement, there is plenty of room to be creative. So you can use a sequence where you set the cables up high for your first set to hit more of the lower pec in the middle for set two to hit the middle pec, and then set them up low for set three to target the upper chest more. I'll also sometimes include intensity techniques such as cable fly 21s, where you'll do seven reps in the top half of the range, seven reps in the bottom half to hit the stretched position, and then seven full range of motion reps to really finish the pecs off. Now granted, this is something I'd probably reserve for the end of a workout for a bit of extra metabolic stress, and so it doesn't interfere with any of your heavier pressing volume. Now I would say that the most common error that I see on the cable fly is just not controlling the movement well. It's common to see people use way too much triceps involvement to help get the weight down, rather than controlling the weight by squeezing their pecs only. So you don't need to walk the triceps completely straight, but they should be kept at the 
same angle from top to bottom. Now, another common mistake is not keeping your shoulder blades retracted and depressed. As I discussed in the Technique Tuesday video on the bench press, it's important to keep your scapulae back and down to put the pecs in a mechanically safer and stronger position. And if you wanna try this out for yourself, you should feel a huge difference in how hard your pecs fire if you allow your shoulders to roll forward versus if you keep your scapulae back. And besides that, this forward rounding can lead to shoulder pain that can be easily avoided by simply locking your upper back into position first. So guys, that is all that I have for the chest fly. Uh, before we go, I wanna let you guys know that I've got a new program on the way this weekend. So it's gonna be available for purchase on jeffnipper.com on April the 20th. It's gonna be a six day upper lower program. So it's gonna go upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower rest. Uh, so something that's probably unique for many of you. Now I've been testing it myself in the gym for the last couple of weeks and I think it's ready to go. Um, so you can sign up for my mailing list at the link in the description below if you'd like to be notified when that's available. And I think we can all start at pretty much the same time. Um, I'm also gonna be vlogging my progression through the program here on the channel and also on my Instagram. Um, so you guys can follow along as we go through. Also, if you guys haven't seen my bench press and dip technique Tuesday videos, I'll put both of those over here. Definitely recommend giving them a watch as well. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new, and I'll see you guys all here next Tuesday.